land. That is what a lot of Bangladesh looks like for four or five months of the year, covered in water, impossible to do very much. And that is, can you see the building? That's a school. As we were driving along, this was about three weeks ago, my colleague said, oh, that's one of our schools on our project. Oh, how do they manage? Well, what happens? Their education is disrupted quite frequently. The schools are often very small or... We move on. Those are schools. I didn't see the first one. That's in Afghanistan. Uh, you are obviously all familiar with the terrible problems of education in Af Afghanistan, the problems of girl students, of teachers being threatened. I have colleagues who are threatened, unfortunately, for their work as teachers. But we have uh, male teachers who come to seminars in Afghanistan. When they came to Kabul, they were clean-shaven, they were western-dressed, and so on. When they le by the time they left after a week, they started to grow beards because it was dangerous to be seen outside without a beard. You were considered to be strange or maybe you'd have foreign ways. Teachers would hide their textbooks and their materials if they were travelling because they did not want to, be, to, to risk things. We had teachers working in quite difficult situations outside. That one is Afghanistan, very common situation there. The second one is in Bangladesh. Uh, that was just last week I saw that school. It's not so common in Bangladesh, but there are enough schools like that where learning happens outside because there's a shortage of school buildings. You're lucky if the children go to school as well. There's a lot of pressure on them to stay at home uh, to, or to work, not just to stay at home, but to do domestic work and, and go to work. School of the future. Is this the school of the future? These are real schools. This is the future in many, many, many countries that I work in, that I've seen and that I know about. These conditions are not, not very good. That's a medium-sized classroom. It's about 60 students, I think, in, in there. Uh, they work shifts, often two or three shifts a day. So the children may only go for two or three hours of education. In a country like Indonesia, the uh, average teacher is absent for 20% of the time of their employment. So children are losing 20% of their education. Things that we take for granted, and maybe the children will be happy to lose 20% of their education. But there it's really quite tragic in many ways. It's really quite, quite difficult. But is it all negative? Again, to show you, if someone will help, if I can find a very quick video clip uh, to show you some of the things that are going on in classrooms in Bangladesh. Yeah. You don't get much idea. These are videos that we, we share with our teachers. Uh, you may not think the methodology is very advanced. You may not think their English is very advanced. But... Um, I think you may find it interesting about the way they engage, that they're actually managing to engage the learning and having something useful going on, even despite the conditions. So, oh, now I've lost it. Okay. What happened? Excuse me.
Hi, Andy. You have been Kuna. You have been? I have been to Kuna. To Kuna. Who? You have been to Kuna. Very good. Okay, then Rani. I have been to Rambo. You have been to Rambo. Very good. Then how? By bus. By bus. Good. Then? By train. Very good. Board. Okay, good. So we have to move on. Uh, I think you can see that the students were engaged and learning something, quite in some cases, quite excited about it, despite everything else that was going on. This is in a, a school I visited a few weeks ago in Dhaka. Big, a huge city. It took, it's a 10 kilometer journey from my flat. It took three hours to get there because of the, of the traffic. And I had a Czech friend staying with me. And what do you do with a visitor in Dhaka? There's nothing to see culturally, really. We went to a school and he was absolutely knocked out, he said, by the engagement, by the excitement of learning. All of these children in this school are first generation in education. Their parents are illiterate. And that's very common. So the role of the, of the responsibility of the teacher, can you see how huge that is? If we can go back to your, if we can find a way to get through to your students who find it a bother to have to learn, mm -hmm. we have to find a way to make them want to learn and make them appreciate that. I, I am running out of time. Thank you very much. Let's just see if there's anything inspiring for the future, apart from more inspiring teachers. Yeah. So. <laughs> Enough to worry about tomorrow. I this is my philosophy as well. So I hope that you, I know that you'll find loads that's going to be very useful for the conference. I hope this different perspective has been interesting. Uh, do ask me about it if you if you'd like. I'm going to be here for the whole conference. Thank you very much for your attention and taking part and for your participation. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>